Hi guys, Neil Tappin here from Golf Monthly, uh, and welcome to the first in a three-part series looking at strategy. Uh, we've enrolled the help of Clive Tucker, one of Golf Monthly's top 25 coaches, and Clive has coached a host of different tour players over the years and helped those players build successful strategies for golf courses out on tour. And what we wanted to do was to see whether Clive's tips and advice about strategy could help your average amateur, i.e. me. So we're here at West Hill and we're going to play uh, two par fours, one short, one long, two par threes, one short, one long, and a par five, and try and get some tips and advice as on to how to build a strategy to avoid those big numbers and to get a better score going. Now our friends at Motocaddy have also kitted us out with a couple of electric trolleys, one of which is an M5 Connect. It has a GPS unit built into the, uh, into the trolley itself, so that's how we're going to get all of our distances using that and the Motocaddy app, which is free to download. Uh, so here we are, this is the 12th hole, short, drivable par 4 here at West Hill. Let's get going. Right, so 12th tee, uh, it's 271 yards to the middle of this green. It's a par four, it's definitely a birdie opportunity, even Very for much people so. mm -hmm. like me, yep. who's a handicapped golfer, amateur <laughs> golfer. Uh, but there's trouble everywhere. And one of the things you've said to me already, Clive, is that building a strategy is about working out where you can't hit it as much as where you can hit Correct. it. Correct. So yep. talk me through what the, the different plays are here. Um, well, it is, it's a short high. If we, you know, the elite guys are going to be hitting three iron up. They're probably it's so bouncy that they've probably run it on. And they typically don't think about you know bad shots, and it's fairly open. The landing area about 200 looks pretty open. 220 looks open, but I can't quite tell. The bunkers on the right look a little deeper than the ones on the left. So it's 180 to the ones on the right. Yep. Okay. Uh, is there a second one up on the right? There is a second one. So it's 180 to the first yep. one, 200 to the second one. So they're trying to take the second one out of play. So they'd be right. pitching it 220, letting it roll up, you know, on the green. Um, and I think it's a pretty straightforward, very, very birdable hole. Yes, it is. Yep. Okay, so for your average amateur then, yep. what, what would you advise? Let's say, let's say you're talking to a 12 handicap golfer. There's a, there's a few things to take into account. Number one, you've got to take into account your, your typical shot. Let's say a guy or a girl moves it 10 yards left to right. Okay, then you've got to, you've got to play, you've got to go with your go-to shot. Um, and how far can you hit it? How far do you want to hit it? Is it is a risk reward hole? If you miss hit it right, it looks like it's dead in the trees. So there's it's a little tight on the right hand side. Uh, the traps yeah. on the left, I think, are 220. Yeah. Um, and if you sp if if a 12 handicapper played this 10 times uh, in going for the green, or you know hitting an aggressive shot and then another 10 times hitting a layup shot to the middle of the fairway and then compare the numbers, they'd probably like the layup shot more than the than the aggressive shot. Okay. So one sort of caveat to that is if you're let's say this is the 18th hole and you needed a three to tie go for it because there's nothing no point in coming second if you can win it or get into get in, into the clubhouse and, and tie um, typically you know I, I think for an average player I'd be thinking about hitting it 200 okay yeah what's the process of laying up so, so people go okay 200 it's that's two, a five iron and they just hit it it's 200 but then you, we, we mentioned earlier um or in, in other videos you've got to got to know how far it's going to run so i'm i'm thinking if i pitch this 190 with a four iron uh, i think it will run 25 30. okay so it should leave me just perfectly positioned okay and yeah. that's what you're going to do yeah go on then i'm going to play this hole i'm going to play hit two tee shots on this hole uh, one doing what Clive's doing and laying up into that same sort of spot, hopefully, and one going to go for the green. So we'll see how we get on. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Clive, straight in the flag, Clive. Are you not thinking to yourself, only if I'd... <laughs> It's, it, it's got the worst bounce in the world. It's had the worst bounce in the history of golf and gone straight into a bunker. <laughs> um, but there we go. <laughs> I won't be letting you drop it out of the bunker. Okay. So I'm going to go for the layup first. I'm going to aim a bit left of that. Perfect. That's absolutely perfect. Well done, well done. Okay, that's fine, isn't it? Great shot, yep. Right. Um, okay, second play, I'm going to go for the three iron. Have a go at the... Yeah, go for it. 
I think that would be your normal strategy, the, the <laughs> blast away. Yeah. I've never laid up on this hole, and I've made a few double bogeys because the trees on the mm. right, as you've mm. rightly said, yeah, are yeah, very yeah. much yeah. in play. Yeah. In play. Oh, he's ripped it. That's a proper shot, by the way. Great shot. Oh, got to be good. Got to be good. Can I take the second one? Yeah, absolutely. Got to be front edge. Well played. <laughs> okay, so Clive got a ridiculously unlucky bounce from the middle of the fairway. I mean, it is firm, it is bouncy, these yep. things that happen, eh? Yes. And it's gone into the bunker on the right hand side. Yep, yep, yep. So I noticed you popped in early and gave yourself a good lie. Correct. Good idea. Mm -hmm. Good tip there for any amateurs out there. <laughs> uh, no, but in all, all seriousness, how. Let's abandon strategy for two seconds. You're yep. in a fairway bunker. Yeah, yep. How do you get the strike on it that you need? So you've got 72 yards, probably saying 72 yards to the, yeah, the flag I'd, here. I'd play it exactly as normal. So, so I'd play it like a, a fairway trap, uh, fairway shot. Right, so okay. So this is not, in my head, it's not a bunker shot at all. Right. So I'm just going to try and pick it clean. How are you going to pick uh, it clean? That's there's a, there's a couple of things you can do, actually. If you're, if you're not particularly happy with that type of situation, number one, you've got to practice it. There's a couple of things you can do. You can, you can swing ever so slightly more from the inside and play the ball slightly more back than normal because it tends to be shallow and picky. Right, okay. It's quite nice. But you'd have to aim a little bit to the left because you're going to hit a bit of a push. Right, okay. So that's how I'm going to play. I'm going to aim a bit left and swing a little away from me to the right and play the ball slightly how back How good myself. do you have to be to be able to do that? Well, is that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> is that something that your average golfer is well, ri all in? I'm thinking I to myself, would, I mean, I'm not sure I'd try that because uh, uh, well, it's badly. It's just a bit picky. So if I play it back in the stance, it means I'm definitely going to hit it on the way down. Right, okay. But because I'm aiming left and, and swinging slightly away from it, it gets a little bit shallower. Okay. So it's, it's, it's a bit of a picky shot. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then strategy-wise, mm -hmm. here, yep. so you've you're already made a mistake, yep. or you haven't, but yep. you effectively in the trap. have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what's the, the big thing that you're trying to avoid, what you're trying to do from here? Well, it's, it's a deepish, as we said on the tee, the traps on the right look much deeper than the ones on the left. So the miss on this hole is definitely left side. Right, okay. You know, that, that you've got to avoid the right side, unfortunately, we're in it. I'm faced with a fairly steep, steep bunk, so I just need to pick enough club to get up. And we're not very far away, 70, 75 yards, puff of wind against hardly anything, really. So my lob, my gap wedge is, he said, fingers crossed, is definitely going to get out of this trap. So I'm just going to try and hit it 70, 75 yards. Okay, go on. So I've got my mark on the floor. So I'm going to play it slightly back in the stance, but aim a hair left, but not much. Try and just take it a little bit more on the inside and just pick it out off what the top. What a shot. Thank you. What a golf shot that is. Thank you. That's a, Thank you. Did you get, I hope you got that on camera because that is amazing. <laughs> so yeah, just in from, aim left to allow for the fact that you're swinging more from the inside because the ball's back in the stance because that's going to push it a bit, but then just pick it off the top. Very good. I should say at this point that Clive has played in five Open Championships, so he's not, you know, he's not bad uh, and that was very good indeed. Okay, so my layup was a was decent because it's taken these yep. bunkers out of play. Yeah, I guess if I pushed it, I'd be in where you were, but yeah, yeah, yeah. we're okay. Yeah. It's 55 yards yes. to the front. Yeah, yeah. What are you, what's your advice to me here? Well, I mean, the question I would ask is how far does your half shot go with the 58 or your easy shot? I mean, we know the flat out one goes 90, so you I said? Hit my 58 degree wedge, I can hit 90. 90 right, okay. and that's a sort of full pitch shot really okay. for me. So you have a, uh, an idea of how, a half, how far a half swing may go or not? No. Okay, right. Excellent. <laughs> so either no, way, I just feel, like, you, you, it's like I just, I'll, I'll move grip, my hand down the grip, grip and down I'll down the, swing it as far. Okay, that's, I mean, that, there's a couple of ways you can do it actually. You can add loft and hit it as hard, it's going to go shorter. Right. But it's a tight line, so I don't think you're going to do that. I'd be thinking about a, an easy 58 half shot. So around about half swing in your mind, a half swing. Yeah. Other thing interesting about the 12th hole is it's a pretty big green with a very large tier in it. Yes. Now, and we're on the front edge. Yeah. So if you actually overcook that a bit, you've got a backstop. Yes. So if you, if you hit it, okay, I'm going to pitch it. And I'd be trying to pitch it 
on the green, because if yes. you pitch it short of the green, you're not sure what's going to happen. You could get a fiery bounce. You could get a fiery bounce. So I'd be trying to pitch it fairly accurately to the, about 50, 55 and see what happens. But if you hit it a bit long, it actually will run down there. If you actually hit it beautifully and pitched it 65, it would really probably come back quite close. Yeah. So that, that target's bigger because of that back. You're not giving me many excuses here. No, you should hit a good one. <laughs> but <laughs> the truth is, with a shot like this, 55 yards into a green, it's an area that certainly people who've played with me in the past will know it's an area I've struggled with right, right, right. and that a lot of people do struggle with. Mm, mm. What's, a, what's a good piece, what's a good tip for me in this scenario? The good tip is, the, the, the obvious thing is to, is to try and figure yardage out when you, before you play or when you're practicing. So right. I'd, I'd be, you know, Graham would be hitting shots about rib cage high, chest high, shoulder high, so he's got, and he can grip up and down the grip as well. So he can, uh, he, he's pretty good within about a five yard three to five yard gap. In 2010, he was just he was the best in the world, I'd say, from 120 in. Right. So he can change, he can vary the speed and the loft very, to, to a fine margin. But for most of us, if we just sort of swung, instead of, say, all the way back and hit it flat out, how far would the ball go if you went, say, chest high with the grip and all the way through? And just, you know, hit, hit a number, use your, you know, your, your lasers or, or the apps and things to see how far it's going. And David Howe writes the numbers of his half swings on the back of his clubs. Right. So it never forgets it. Yeah. So for me, my 58 half shot goes about 60. My half 54 goes 85. My half wedge goes 100. And I've got the full swings as well. And then you can vary it a bit with, you're trying to, f you know, f with practice, fill in those gaps a little bit. Yeah by okay. taking a bit off the speed or taking a bit on and off the length of the swing. Okay. But you need to work at it. Right, then yeah, get which it. is something I don't do. I'm going to just swing, the, you know, swing a bit shorter. Yeah, exactly. Rip, rip a bit down. Yeah, I would, yeah. Commit to it, though. Even though it's a dinky shot, you've got to get to the nice, firm, full finish. Good, actually. That looks pretty good for length. Look at that. Yeah. Okay. Doable. Now, it. Over a period of time, today's difficult because you're three irons, you've got but a 25 or eagle, but a fantastic shot. Over a period of time, you know, which would work the best? Yes. And you know, if you're if you're the type A individual, you're going for it. If you're the type B, you're probably not going to. You're A, I'm B. <laughs> you're definitely <laughs> I'm, I'm risk, A, yeah. I'm risk averse. So you know, if I play this every day for a year and I laid it into this spot, I'd probably be under par. If I went for it, I might lose a couple of balls very tight right and I can plug it in these traps up the right. It's too tricky. My head says, don't like that. Yeah. Well, so give it a time, give it, just assess it over a period of time. Good advice. Right, onward. Okay, so this is where my three iron finished. Yep, pretty good. Uh, what's this gonna do? And how are you picking the line? Well, it's up here we can see that I think it's, a baby bit left to right. A baby bit left to yeah, right. Yeah, okay. baby bit. Yeah. As I think I'm looking from six, seven feet right of you, I'm looking pretty straight up the hill. I'd, there's not much in that. Okay. Left side, left edge. Stayed there. Almost went the other way. Oh, I've turned my eagle chance into a yeah. solid par. Yeah. Now, the reason I said aim straight is because I wasn't sure and I just needed a read on mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the old wily old yeah, pro Yeah, that's the one. Go on. This is for a sandy, sandy oh, birdie. Sandy birdie. This is two bits. Oh, he's made it as well. Oh. <laughs> oh, I can, you can have yours over your bum read. <laughs> Good birdie. Are you going to putt this one or not? Oh, go on then. We'll have a putt with this one. Go for it. Because if this one misses, then yeah. it proves that going for it was the right strategy. Correct. And I know <laughs> nothing at all. Looks like <laughs> left edge. Okay. Oh. So they're both good strategies. Perfect. Good demo there. I should play more golf with you, Clive. <laughs> well done. Right, on to the 16th hole here at West Hill. Much longer par four, a lot more trouble, more to think about. Let's go and have a look. Right. Okay, so hole number 16. This is our second par four, and this is the tough par four. This is a low stroke index hole. It's, it's long enough. It's only, it's only sort of 400 odd yards. Mm -hmm. So it's not 
not, massively not long, long. But there's a lot of trouble up there. In particular, there is a ditch that the app is telling me is around about 270 yeah, right, right. of the team. Yeah, yeah. So, what am I thinking? What are you thinking, yeah. Well, I'm thinking, I wish I was 20 years young and hit the drive over the ditch, but I can't. <laughs> so my max drive these days would be about, max max would be 260 carry, if, you know, if I just happened to really clip one. Also, looking as if past the ditch, there's heather. There's so it looks, heather. you need 290 carry, so that's me definitely out of the ballpark there. Um, it's downhill, it's a bit fiery, it's bouncy today because of the summer we're having. Um, so I think if I can get it maybe 190 through the air, it should release. 240 max because the ditch is at 260. I'm building in a bit of a buffer zone. Yeah, you it, build, it went the, to the number one mistake you can make is hit it in the to, ditch, Yeah, right? exactly. What I cannot do is go in there. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. And at this point, should your average amateur be thinking about where the flag is? Um, probably not. Um, I think it wouldn't do any harm, but if, if the average amateur is, okay, the pin's on the right, it's back right there, they're going to aim up the left because of it. Uh, the, the, yes and no. No, because you can't see the edge of the fairway. I can't see the edge. We can chat about how to figure that in a minute when we look backwards. But I think you know, you're never going to go far wrong middle of the fairway. You know, it's like if, if the average amateur hit a, a nice, you know, took into consideration the roll, the downhill, wind, etc., where the trouble is, and then hit the next one on the middle left half of the green and it rolled up to the middle, it would be absolutely chuffed with the four here, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. fine. Okay, yeah. let's give it a go. So I'm going to do the same as you. I'm going to hit four iron two. Right. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now this is slightly downwind, is it, Kai? A smidge. Yeah, there so is some okay. wind, but it's not much. A brilliant tip on how to read the wind on inland parkland golf courses where you're surrounded by trees. A brilliant piece of advice. Uh, so I do know, and look, look out for that, it's in the par three video. I do know it's downwind. I'm gonna aim a little bit up the left because of the slight block that I hit. That's it, yeah, good. Yeah, we're then thinking now. So you th be careful, you're thinking like a golfer now. <laughs> it's gone straight down the middle. Yeah, obviously. beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Now, an hour ago, that would have been straight down the right side of the rough. Yeah. So if you hit a push, Trevino hit a push his entire life. He could push, draw it and push fade it, or change the trajectory when he was a gifted golf in that sense. But if you, you know, you've got to play what you've got. And if you've got to push, allow for it. Perfect. Right, so here we are on the 16th fairway. Uh, Clive, you have, the trolley is telling me, you have 149 front, yeah. 166 middle, yeah. 183 back. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pins, obviously, tucked. At the back. Quite, quite a long way back. Yep, yep, yep. Um, yeah, thought, what's the thought process? Thought process is, first of all, I'm thinking, well, where do I not want to go? Where can I not afford to go? Yeah. I don't particularly want to go long, so I'd rather hit it, say, 175. And I def max. Yeah, max, that's kind max, of what you're thinking. Max. Absolutely max, because I'm giving myself a buffer zone. So if the pins, if, if the pin, and we're, we're in the middle of the round, for example, but if it was the end of the round and I had to make birdie, I'd be more aggressive because I might just as well be, uh, you know, going out on my shield rather than coming back with it in my hand, you know. So uh, the other thing is I don't really want to go to the right. Don't like deep bunkers particularly. Looks a bit difficult. So my my miss is middle of the green a hair short of the flag. That's what I'm thinking. Because all the there's no, it doesn't appear to be any trouble left. There does right and there does long. Okay. So now we've got a reasonable amount of changes in elevation here yep. as well. So Slightly we're, up. we're not too far off the level, but mm. we are a little bit down, a little bit up. Yep. What's your advice for people out there trying to figure out yardages with uphill and downhill? Uh, well, you know, downhill, if it's uphill, excuse me, on this particular shot, I think it's half a club longer. Is it? This is I half club longer? Yeah, I think I wouldn't, so. See, it's funny, I wouldn't have but If it's up, that. it's, well, it's yeah. only, that's only five yards. Yeah. So, yeah. Give it a go. All right, let's hope I missed the greens, the greens cutter up there. So I'm going to try and hit this middle-ish of the green.
So I start it in the middle. It happened to be leaking a bit to the pit. Oh, 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 oh. Happy with that. Very good. Half That's a club up. short. It's actually bounced right, but it there. was a nice shot. Perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, you might notice the, the fairways are incredibly brown. And that's because in the UK we haven't had any rain for about two months yeah, now. Yeah, easily, we? yeah. So that was a very tight line. Yeah. And a good shot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Clive, you just, you've actually off camera talked me through what to do. Can you just explain <laughs> to everyone what you've just said to me? Right, what Neil's very good at is smashing it. <laughs> and he kind of plays to the limit. So we've got a, an interesting situation. It's about 165, 163 to the back edge. Um, and his, his flat out eight goes 155. So you can hit this as hard as you like, knowing you cannot pitch this long. So you, it's, it's right up your street. Yeah, so it's so, saying 165. Yeah, it's a straightforward blast with an eight iron. If the pin was at the front, I'd be off, I'd say hit an easy seven. Right. Because if it's at the front, you don't quite get it, you're off the green. Yeah. But back of the green, you're, you're taking the back out of play and you're liking the aggression of it. Yeah. So okay. go for it, go for it. Come no then. pressure. I like it. Yeah. You've filled me with confidence there. So you can hit this as good as you want. But I'd aim five yards left. Okay. Now there's the push, so we've oh, taken nice. that into account. So it should be it's all right. handy. Top Next man. Next to you. Top man. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Easy game now. <laughs> right, Clive, so yeah. we've both missed the green actually. Yeah, yeah, well, we're both <laughs> rolled we're off. We're both right next to each other. Here. They, they were pretty good shots, they just rolled off, but they were, they were, they thought they were well, well, well thought out. We haven't gone long. We both landed in the middle of the green. Actually, it's really a huge roll off from this short half of the green down, but it's a, it's a fall off area, and that's, that's pretty good. Okay. Go One on. thing I could say about it is if you were prepping or you're having a practice round, if you're hitting shots up here and you see where it rolls off, you'd be practicing to all different pin positions from this point because you right, know okay. it's like to fall there. So when you get on the course, you feel a bit more comfortable because you know what the ball's going to do. Okay, very good. Yep, yep. Um, I want to ask you now about, with your experience with the tour players, one thing that they're, well, one thing they're all excellent at mm. is playing golf, playing well under pressure. Yes. Um, firstly, how important is a pre-shot routine in that? And secondly, yep. what, what would you advise people who maybe they don't want to take, they want to have a really complicated pre-shot routine that takes forever. Mm -hmm. What would be your, your advice for parameters on that front? Uh, in the first question is the pre-shot routine, I believe, was sort of devised for that exact reason. So if the reason of not being flustered or not being, you know, having your head go in the wrong position or the wrong place. So the, the pre-shot routine gives you a process so it keeps you, in a cliche, it keeps you in the moment because you are focused in the moment on doing something. Yeah. And that's what they're good at doing. So it's a distraction. So in terms of the amateur stuff, you still need a bit of a plan whether it's you know you could okay. be just thinking just thinking for example around the greens in this sort of situation yeah, yeah, you could yeah. just be thinking about okay what's my best rhythm what's my best swinging rhythm what's my best timing for the for my shots rather than you know the pre-shot routine so okay right if i just want to feel like i've got a nice finish go ahead swing to the nice finish at least it's it's productive and, it, and it's keeping away from any negative thinking but it's quick and, and it's fairly quick and easy and it's positive it's yeah putting you in, it's putting your technically it's putting you in a good place it is and it's a good distraction because you're not oh what about this what about that you know last time i laid our three putted it or oh, don't like 17 because they're keeping out of bounds there you know you, you're in the moment yeah. just doing something to the best of your ability and allowing it to flow a little bit without being too bogged down with the, yeah. with the whole pre-shot routine. Okay, Clive, so what's this one doing? Uh, up here, as you can see, with a ridge in front of us. Um, uh, more slopey than I can remember the, the greens are, but it's pretty straight. It's going to break a little to the right. Not very much. Um, I'd be reluctant to go three or four feet past because it is very, very slopey from the back there. So try and dead weight it or just a hair shy. Okay. Don't hit it past. <laughs> I'm trying not to hit it past. So I'll probably rip it up then now. <laughs> you hit it past. I hit it past, yeah. <laughs> you can take that away. <laughs> Good four. Thank you. Right. You give me a shot here, aren't you, Clive? Yes, of course. Low stroke index. <laughs> Just a hair left. A little bit left. Ooh. 
Let's see if you've got an insurance policy. <laughs> right. I think you can go left half maximum there. Oh, as if by magic, well, top man. Okay, well, thanks, Clive. Thanks, sir. Thanks, very invitation. Good. Very, very nice, good. enjoyable. Thank Guys, you. thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions about how to devise a course strategy, about how to get around your home course that little bit better, please do leave comments below. We'll get Clive to uh, answer yep. a few for of us. Uh, hit the like button if you like the video, and we will see you next time. Yep, cheerio, thank you.